What's up guys? Welcome back to Transportal in the studio with me, Everlight. This is episode 15 and today I'm going to be teaching you a workflow process which should help you dramatically decrease the amount of time it takes to go from a simple track idea to a fully fledged arrangement. This is a process which I call track scaffolding and it has personally helps decrease my production time massively to literally a matter of hours if to make the arrangement of a new song. I'm also going to be talking about the session view in Ableton Live as it is a monster of a productivity tool, especially when used in conjunction with track scaffolding. So let's get stuck straight into it and I'll see you inside of Ableton. So then here I am inside of Ableton Live, only this time you'll notice that I haven't come empty handed. I have a little project already loaded. Here's one I made earlier in a true Blue Peter fashion. And the reason I have this loaded is because I'm going to talk a little bit about Ableton Live Session View and why it's so awesome and why if you have Ableton, you should be using it. It's quite surprising how many producers who use Ableton are not familiar with the Session View or don't really utilize it all that much. But if you can figure out how to use it and how it works properly, then it will be a tremendous productivity tool for generating ideas for your arrangement and generating the overall vibe uh, and contents of your track. I'm not going to go into loads of detail about how the session view works. There's plenty of material online that will be able to take care of that for you. But I will give it a brief overview just to kind of show you a little bit how it works so that you can get a really good understanding of why it's so great. So in front of you, you'll notice that there are is basically a grid. You have your channels, which you would typically expect, like, you know, your kick, your bass, all of your instruments, that sort of thing along the top here and their respective mixer channels and strips at the bottom of the screen but in the middle of the screen you've got this big grid and on that grid you have these little rectangles which are called clips and each individual clip has its own play button on it and it also there's a bunch of stop buttons which will stop the playback of that clip a clip is simply a container for note information so you can see here when i double click on this clip uh, under the baseline here it brings up the piano roll and it shows me a bunch of notes when i press play on that clip, what happens is that will just loop over and over and over until I press stop. So you can fill in all of these little snippets here. I've got a loop here for my kick. I've got a loop here for my claps, etc. You can fill it all up with all this information, all these notes and stuff, so that when you press play on one of these clips, it will play and it will loop over and over. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you might have noticed that there are several rows. There are four rows total that I have here. And each of these rows is named based on the rough area of the arrangement that they will be in. Because when you click the play button over here on the master channel under one of these strips, it plays all of the clips on that row. I'll go ahead and show you that now. And you'll notice that it does it all in time as well, which is super cool. Effectively, each row is a rough draft of that particular section of the future arrangement. And when I'm starting a track and I'm developing the overall vibe and character, etc., of the track, this is where I start. When I'm focusing on putting all the main elements in, I'm not interested in the arrangement timings. I'm not interested in how long these sections are going to last just yet. What I'm interested in is getting them sounding nice, getting a really solid idea, a solid melody, solid sound design in the track first before I then expand it into a full arrangement. And I do that via track scaffolding, which we'll get onto in a moment. But a lot of you that are looking at this grid right now will go, I already do something like that in arrangement view. And a lot of you probably do. You probably have like a 33 bar loop, which has your intro here, a 33 bar loop over here, which has like your main section, and then maybe like another one for your outro or something. Or maybe you just have one big loop that has everything in it, and then you copy it across later and delete stuff, right? That's fine, that's okay. But the reason why I personally prefer to use Ableton Session View is because it is far more fun. You can switch off these elements on and off as you please, as the track is playing, and it'll all be in time. And by jamming with the track in such a way, you can generate ideas for your arrangement that you might not have thought of otherwise. For example, I'll jam out a little bit here with this main section. A 
and that's just a super quick example of the sort of fun that you can have with just a mouse. If you have a grid controller, I've got one just off the side here, you can have more fun switching things on and off and playing with stuff because they have a grid and you just press the buttons on the grid and things turn on and off. It's loads of fun, I do it all the time, and it's a really natural way for you to get great ideas for your arrangement for you to save later. So there we have it, that's a super quick overview of the session view and why I think you should be using it. And it ties in really well to track scaffolding, which we're going to move on to next. Track scaffolding is the name I give to effectively using reference tracks or little bits of reference tracks to put together a rough idea of the timings for your arrangement. The process is really simple. You pick one, two, or maybe even three different tracks which you think have a good timing for their sections. Pick a track that you think has a perfectly timed breakdown, as in the length of it is perfect, or when it hits is perfect. And think of, a, or think of another track that's got like a perfectly timed intro, that sort of stuff. And then we put that track into Ableton Live and we use track locators to mark the sections of the track as they happen in our reference tracks. And then we delete the reference tracks altogether and what we're left with is a scaffold of where individual sounds should start and stop and where the overall bits, the main sections of your arrangement should begin and end. So to demonstrate this, I've gone ahead, I've pulled in my track reflections from my album Lightspeed, um, and we're going to be analyzing where things start and stop, where main sections of the arrangement begin and end, and even make a detailed note on some of the lesser important things, like specific sounds on when they start. I'm gonna start listening to the track, I'm gonna skip through it, I'm gonna make a note, I'm gonna set a locator at the sections which are relevant. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now. I'll show you the first few and then I will fast forward through the rest of my analysis of the track. So this is where the kick and the bass starts. Here's a small breakdown. So there's the next intro section and now I'm gonna go ahead and listen through the rest of the track and fast forward this section and meet you at the end. Okay, and we are back. So here we've got the kick and bass starting at the very beginning. We've got a breakdown that happens in this section. Uh, we've got the intro carrying on. Then it changes and has a melodic chord progression. Then a vocal is introduced. Then we go to the breakdown. The lead is introduced. It builds up. It has the main section. There's a small breakdown. There's an outro. And then the chord change stops here. So that's generally the overall idea of the track once you've have that you can if you wanted to go even deeper and listen to the track in a bit more detail and pick out individual elements like when does the hi-hat start or when does the ride start so just to demonstrate again i'm going to fast forward a little bit and i'm going to fill in just a few more little locators just to demonstrate that And that'll do for now. You got to remember that you're only using this as a rough guide for the arrangement of your own track. You're not trying to copy it. You just want to get an understanding of where things start and stop. So now that we have the track, our reference track mapped out, we can just go ahead and delete that channel altogether. And we are left with a rough scaffold of when things should start and stop. Now, you might have noticed when I was playing that track that Reflections, if you're familiar with it, is an uplifting trance track, whereas the sample that we're working with here is more like a hard groove techno sort of track. That was done on purpose. One of the best ways to get a creative arrangement is to borrow arrangement styles from different genres entirely. That's something that I love doing, and that's a creative tip. But also, I really think that it's important that you are careful not to copy the track that you are working on. Remember, we're supposed to be using this as a guide. We're not doing it as a carbon copy. So now that we have the general sections, we can look at the how long this track is going to be. Uh, and we can see that this track is going to be nearly eight minutes long. 
once we finish it. Now for a hard groove techno track, that is far too long. Typically hard groove techno tunes, techno tunes in general, only last like six to seven minutes. So we're gonna want to adjust our arrangement here, our scaffold to bring it down in length. Uh, for example, I really don't think that we're going to need this intro section as uh, like this. So I think that what we can do is go ahead and delete this breakdown here. Shorten this section by about, I'd say that much. Go ahead and delete that time there. And now we have a track that kind of kicks off. Also, techno tracks usually kick in a bit quicker. So I feel like we could probably shave off this section too. So we'll delete this locator here. Go ahead and make this shorter. So now we're left with a much shorter track. We've managed to bring the entire length of the track down to 6 minutes 30. Now, when you are making your track, there is going to be stuff for these markers that just aren't going to fit your track. That's fine. We're not trying to carbon copy it. So it's absolutely perfectly fine if you change things around. In fact, that's the entire idea. Now, here's the coolest part. This is where, what I was talking about before, about um, the session view and track scaffolding merge in one glorious section. So do you remember over on this section, we were looking at our different sections here. We had, we had our intro, we had our breakdown, we had our main section, and we had our outro, right? Well, now we have them in arrangement view too. So now it's just a simple case of putting these bits over here. And to do that, you simply record them in. So you'll know you click play on this section here. Main section, that's all playing. We locate our main section here, which is just here. And then we simply click the record button. You'll notice that Ableton Live is effectively printing onto the arrangement view. Um, that it's currently locked. You can't actually access or edit any of these um, to un because you, it's a session view is overriding it right now. But if you click this little button up here, it unlocks it. And then we can go ahead and we can highlight these and make changes to the length. There we go. And now that's our main section. Now we can go ahead and do the same with our intro. Select, that's got nothing in it. Select these, move them over. And you can see here that this section says vocal start. So, you know, why not? Let's take our vocal from this track, our little vocal sample, put that there. Now this says melody change, right? We don't have a melody in this particular track, but maybe this could be an opportunity to put something else in. So I'm gonna copy, uh, copy across the chord loop. We'll copy across all of the elements except for the kick and the bass. To there. But I'm going to change this around. I'm actually going to make this a small break and then have the uh, kick come in again before it does another smaller breakdown. Already, you can start to hear and see a full drafted out arrangement happening. And I've only been working on it for a couple of minutes. Having a general idea of where stuff should start and stop based on a reference track, which you have then modified, is a really, really good way of quickly bashing out arrangements, which are pretty much guaranteed to sound great. It prevents you from getting hung up on exactly how thing, how long things should go and it allows you to stay in the moment. You can see here that not only have I started to get a pretty good intro going, but I also have space for me to fill out the breakdown, the outro, and even roughly how long the track is going to last. So it's really easy to do that and fill that out because we already have the parts that we made previously in session view. And using this technique, I have made entire arrangements of tracks in a matter of hours. It really, really speeds up your workflow. Um, and you don't just have to use the one reference track. For example, in the last track that I produced, I used two different reference tracks. I used a reference track for the beginning all the way up to the breakdown and then i used another reference track from the breakdown all the way to the end of the uh, end of the song even though it says things on here like vocal start or melody change 
they don't have to be that in your track they're just timings you can put something else there instead but the point is is that those are good timings it's a good way of holding the listener's interest and that's pretty much it that is track scaffolding and how ableton session view can help with generating an arrangement guys this has been transportal in the studio number 15 with me everlight please do subscribe to the transportal youtube channel check us out on all of our socials we have an excellent facebook page with a massive following go and check that out as well until the next time I've been Everlight, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon.